All right. So today I am going to talk about a new VR headset. It is here. <coughs> it looks very small, just like uh, sunglasses. It's actually the HTC Vive Floor. Uh, it has been introduced, I think, sometime the year before last year, 2021, but we recently just got it. And I got the time to play with this new, uh, you can call it glass or goggle because of its very lightweight shape. I've been playing with this uh, VR headset for a while, and I would like to give my uh, impression on it, whether it's a good one, whether we can use it in many of the data scenario within our lab. So this Vive Floor, the basic uh, parameters are, it has a 3.2K combined resolution with LCD screen per each eye, which means it's two by, two, two, uh, two by 21 inches screen with about 1600 multiple by 1600. It's a square shape per eye on the pixels. It has a 100 degree field of view, and it has a 75 hertz refresh rate, and it's uh, and interestingly with this small body, it got six stuff. So it's a, it's a, if you see clearly with this interesting shape, I'm not sure if you can see the two dots here, that's the inside out tracking camera. So it has six stuff. Um, from the parameter, it's a very normal, mediocre VR headset, if we say it, but if you can see already, per hardware design, it's a very interesting VR headset. Because it's so small, so it's on as the legs and unfolds as uh, like a glasses where we can pull on. I'll pull on later to show you how to do it. And the unique point of it, it's the VR headset, I always call it VR headset, the headset has no battery in it. So it must run on a external battery. So if you see there's a USB connector dongle on the on the one of the legs, and then to use it, I have to use some external USC power, such as the power bank here, and has a USB-C cable connected. And in order to power it on, I will need to plug it in, and then the headset is powered on the thing. I can just press the button here to turn it on. Uh, yeah, it is, it's booting up. And if you see there's a, there's a flashing LED light now, it means the power is on. So every time to use it, it needs a external power bank. Uh, it's small, so it's very compact and light, which is a good advantage. But the, the sacrifice, sacrificed internal batteries, you have to run on external battery. Um, another good thing is um, if I remove this soft cover here, there's a magnetic attached, I can just remove it. And then if you can see here, I'll, I'll unplug it for now. Anyway, if you can see here, it has a correction lens attached to it. There's some numbers on the side and, we, and I actually can turn a dial. So it has correction lens attached to the top. It, it can change um, like to accommodate people's, people like me who wear glasses. It means I can remove the glasses and then just wear the headset like a glass on like this. And then it will accommodate my eyes by using the lenses. I can adjust it. So even, um, I should put my glass back on. So even without wearing a glass, I can see the content inside the screen clearly. So these are the advantage part. But I think other than the battery issue, it's fine because um, we can carry external battery at home or just attached to a laptop. One of the main issue with it, which I personally find, is the interaction design. So I've been wondering, like, because it's a VR headset, how do we control it? Um, in a very typical and a standard lightweight headset, like the one I have here, this is the Oculus Go. So it has been, it's a three of portable VR headset, and all in one, it does not need external battery, it has everything in it. And normally to operate the things inside, you will need a controller like this. So this is a 3 of controller. You wear the headset on your head, and you hold the controller in your right hand, and use the laser point to point it. So originally, when I first get this, I was thinking it, it do something like a 3 of a basic 3 of a gaze and point, because it's so lightweight, I assume it's just for people to put it on and then just like consume lightweight uh, content, then it will be very easy to carry because you just need to bring this uh, VR goggle, VR headset, or VR glass with you, and you can use gazing to uh, just look and point. Turns out it's not. So you have to use it with a phone. And at this moment, when the video being recorded, Android phone only. Because uh, in order to do it, it needs an Android phone like 
the same sound I have here. You need to download this so-called Vive app and connect it to the Vive Flow. If you can see, it's now, does it show? Yeah, it, it connects to my Vive Flow and it's because it's been paired with this, this headset here. And after paired, the phone sh uh, serves as a controller. And surprisingly, it serves as a remote control, three DOF controller, because the phone has dry accelerometer, similar to the Oculus Go control. It knows where it's pointing, but does not know where it is uh, translational in the space. It's only do the rotation and pointing, and then it will turn the entire touch screen of the phone as a touchable controller. I think uh, it, can't, it, it will not show anything here. It just uses the touch screen, but in the VR headset, you will see a, a, a tracked 3D model of your phone that is pointing. I think the top part is trigger, which is confirm, and then the bottom part is like go back or menu, and the left and right is a small area cut out that become like a uh, universal menu or maybe settings. So the screen is being divided into four areas where you can touch. And it's actually holding the phone like this. But I think it's quite weird is uh, you have to touch the phone in order to use, but you can't actually see your phone. And you know, on the screen, there's no physical feedback. It's just a flat screen, although there's vibrates. But sometimes what I find out is always, because uh, I can't see my phone, even if the 3D model that is tracked inside VR, it's not that accurate. My, my thumb is always touching the run area. And sometimes because, you know, the trigger is on the top and it's the most frequency I use the function. And then it turns out, I think that we are not accustomed to that's uh, touching the upper part of the phone most of the time. So it just feels weird that I have to reach out to touch it and I always touch the wrong thing. So I think, I used to think that a lightweight headset like this can allow us to use a Google Cardboard style uh, gazing or uh, just have a button somewhere here. I can look at the target and just press the button to confirm the selection. It does not. It says it has hand tracking capability coming up, but uh, two years after it has been launched, I, I haven't seen any updates about the hand tracking. It got the camera, it got the hardware to do hand tracking, just not enabled yet. So for now, the problem is um, interaction is hard. So after all, what I actually care about this headset, this device is to compare with the Oculus Go, because you know I do a lot of research around the 360 video and I do a lot of demo of 360 videos. I wonder if this can replace this as a daily 360 video viewing device, because you know viewing 360 video in a VR headset has the best viewing experience. Um, my main concern is first, as a non-VR uh, frequent user, general public, can they put on this and start using immediately? Second, can we use it in batch, such as 10 people in a conference setting that they all watch 360 videos at the same time? Can we do it? Because it's a lot of scenario. It's a scenario that we met uh, quite frequently here in the lab that we need to demo 360 video to a group of visitors. Third, is, is it easy to copy files in it, into it? Because uh, you know, 360 videos, they are large in size, relatively a few gigabytes in size. We have to quickly be able to transfer into it from a computer or something. So uh, my main concern is those three points, because those three points are good with Oculus Go, but I was expecting um, uh, improvements, because you know, the Oculus Go has a, has a controller, like what I said, the controller. And every time you give people to select a video to play, they have to find a, learn how to use a controller and then first the set orientation and then find the content they want and then use the trigger to confirm. And for a lot of people, they find it a little bit hard to learn. And so, and then we can't see what's in there. We have to tell them to hold this, point that. And it's kind of like a difficulty for people to get use onto it. So I always expect if this device can solve the problem. Mm, turns out, I think uh, for regular people, it is good to use because it's just like a glass. The form factor for them is easy to understand. They can just remove their glass and then just pull the legs and then put it under the head like that. I'm not sure if it looks a little bit funny, like I'm wearing some Ray-Ban Pilot glasses. And it's easy to, to, for them to put it on. And even if they have need to wear a correction lenses, there's a this correction adjustment here for them to accommodate that. And I think that's a positive side, the pro, one of the pros. But the problem is um, the interaction. 
because what I think is if it's just it can run just on this even with external power attached people put on the glass they can find a way to select the video file and just play and then sit on a swivel chair and enjoy it but now it's not so they also you need to you give them the phone for controller and then they have to hold the phone and then do some reset orientation just like the oculus go as well they just need to like the, the, the input is need to use two fingers to tap at the same time to reset and then because they, can, they need to hold the phone they can't see it in the VR they have to learn it do it again so I don't think there's much change compared to the Oculus Go this is a bit of, I think that's a big uh, drawback and or one of the uh, disappointment that I have expected onto it so because of the drawback of the uh, the interaction then it means uh, people have to do uh, several steps before they can enjoy the 360 video and for the general public I believe that's a little bit too troublesome for them to learn and then we have to pair a phone to each of the headset if we have a group visiting scenario and then cost wise that's actually more than just bar bar uh, buying a bunch of those we need to buy a bunch of Android phones as well and uh, at the same time and then charge both the battery on all the phones and then give them each of them, the headset and the phone. I think it's actually more than just Oculus Go to maintenance. So my impression is at this time, it cannot replace the Oculus Go as a very ideal daily 360 video content consuming device. And until they, they update it with the hand tracking uh, capability, and if the hand tracking is just really an intuitive for people maybe point and then tap, tap on the content for them to play, and at that time, I think it will be better, but I have to test and review it again when it's available. But at this time, my feeling is this is a good design. It's lightweight. It shows the potential for normal people to consume VR content, simple ones such as a 360 video. It has the capability to do some sick stuff, but it's beyond what I'm interested in, so I'm not testing into too much into that. At this time, it's a good starting point to show a VR headset just as lightweight and simple as this, but there are more to do for it to be actually become the real daily to go devices to consume 360 contents, not at this time. So HTC, you have more job to do, please upgrade it. OTA new software enable hand tracking, and then I think it will be a very good device for people to consume uh, immersive content such as 360 videos and it will be very a very very happy thing to see for people like me who create 360 contents and I think that's for today. Thank you.